Uh, so this is the uh, Town of Fairfield's Economic Development Commission meeting of uh, Thursday, September 7th, uh, 2nd, rather, uh, 2021. Uh, it's now 8.38 a.m., and we're calling the meeting to order. We have uh, with us uh, Mark Barnhart, Director of Community Economic Development. We have uh, Chairman Kevin Lesko, uh, Commission members uh, John Slavin, uh, Justin Beck, Don Peterson, Ken Hochhauser, um, we also have with us uh, Matt Fulda and Patrick Carlton from the MetroCog, and our recording secretary Gretchen Gertner, as well as Beverly Ballas representing the Fairfield Chamber of Commerce. Take it away, Mr. Chairman. Excellent. Good. Uh, boy, uh, really, uh, really nice uh, grouping today. So uh, uh, good morning, everyone. I'm glad everyone uh, made it through last night. It was a bit sloppy yesterday, of course. Uh, I believe we'll start uh, by, uh, well, first of all, thank you for our, our guests that are coming and we'll be speaking and hearing from them later. And Beverly, thank you for, for joining us. I know you have a very busy schedule as well. Uh, we should start by uh, having a re review and uh, accepting of the minutes from uh, the last meeting. Uh, if there's an opportunity for someone to uh, bring that forward and, and second it. Anyone? Yes. Anyone? Uh, yes. Excellent. Very good. Excellent. All right. All in favor? We're good. In favor. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so that's that. Uh, that aside, uh, uh, I'm going to pass it back to Mark to to uh, start shaping our, uh, our our morning and 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 talking about our topics. Mark. Yeah, I'm going to pass over item three uh, for the time being, since we have guests here, uh, Matt Fulda and Patrick Carrollton from uh, MetroCog. Uh, who are here to uh, brief the commission on the uh, comprehensive economic de development strategy. I think all of you should have received a preliminary copy of the report, summary report, as well as the technical appendices and implementation uh, strategy and plan. And Matt, uh, I think you can already sh screen share, I believe. I, th I think I shared, uh, allow other people to share. So if you want to Oh, perfect. Yep, I got your, it. Uh, go ahead with your presentation and then we can uh, go from there. Great. Thank you, Mark. Um, as Mark said, my name is Matt Fold. I'm the executive director for the Connecticut Metropolitan Council of Governments, also known as MetroCog. And I have uh, with me Patrick Carlton, who will be. Oh, hold on. I got to switch screens here. There we go. Can you all can you see that on full screen now? Yes. yes. Okay. Perfect. Um, so as, I, as Mark said, we are uh, the the. MetroCog, on behalf of the six municipalities of the greater Bridgeport region, um, have been working on a comprehensive economic development strategy, uh, which is a requirement from EDA, uh, the Economic Development Administration, uh, U.S. Economic Development Administration, uh, to become a designated economic development district, which allows um, municipalities in the region or the region itself to apply for various funding mechanisms through EDA. Uh, so we've been working on this for the last uh, year and a half or so with uh, our consultants from RKG Associates. Uh, and Mark asked if we could come do a, a, a quick presentation, uh, kind of where we at, where we at now, um, and kind of what the what we are do, going to be doing going forward. Um, as Mark said, you you should have all received the draft uh, technical appendix and strategy implementation guide. Um, those are out for a full public comment, thirty day public comment period right now. Uh, we had a um, a press release yesterday. Uh, it was a legal notice in the Connecticut Post, and it's now posted on our website for the public to uh, review and provide comments on. So that will be running through September 30th. Uh, so quickly, the agenda, a brief introduction, overview of what the SEDs are. I, I will go through this relatively quickly. Um, I we, we did also provide this PowerPoint and a PDF version of this PowerPoint to Mark yesterday, so he can send it out to this whole group uh, after the meeting for, for further review of it. Um, Talking a little bit about the overarching findings from the socioeconomic analysis, the market climate, and the economic development analysis. Uh, then a regional SWOT analysis, uh, proposed target industries, um, and implementation framework is kind of the last piece that puts all the data and analysis together into kind of a coalesced uh, rec set of recommendations um, that may or may not get taken up, but are part of the process. So what is a comprehensive economic development strategy? For those of you that don't know, a uh, SEDS is designed to bring together the public and private sectors in the creation of an economic roadmap to diversify and strengthen regional economies. It's locally based and regionally driven. Um, it engages community leader, leaders and leverages the involvement of the private sector. One of the things that EDA requires is that uh, the strategy committee um, that kind of oversees the process is majority private sector. So we have done that um, utilizing the 
Bridgeport Regional Business Council's Economic Development Committee, which Mark Barnhart sits on. Um, I believe Beverly is part of as well, um, and a number of other uh, public and private uh, stakeholders in the region as well. Uh, it integrates human and physical capital planning into in, in the service of economic development. Um, and the, the, the SEDS itself must include a summary background, a SWOT analysis, a strategic direction or action plan, and the valuation framework, uh, which is kind of the, what we put together uh, in, in, in various forms, uh, but to, to make sure that we uh, satisfy all the criteria as laid out by EDA. Um, and as I said previously, the strategy must be led by, uh, the process must be led by a strategy committee uh, consisting of majority private sector representation. Um, so the overarching findings on the socioeconomic analysis, Metrocog, um, as most communities in the Northeast are, is an aging yet diversifying community. Um, possible needs for more diverse housing in the future, inclusive of, of senior housing as well. I know that's something that's been a, a discussion and, and topic uh, of, of uh, interest in Fairfield, is senior housing and um, people to be able to kind of age in place or age in town. Uh, the region's ability to maintain a current work uh, labor force, uh, as obviously as you age uh, and the demographics get older, uh, you start to lose uh, available workforce. Um, so uh, maintaining current and, and expanding it uh, is, could be an issue going forward if we are not able to kind of uh, create a younger generation of people in the region, uh, in, in the state really, as, as, as this really goes to the state too. Uh, Metrocog has more racially and ethnic, ethnically diverse population and business base than the rest of Fairfield County or Connecticut, uh, which is a plus. Um, Metrocog's labor force following similar transition patterns much the Northeast has grown better educated with strongest growth in postgraduates. Uh, Metrocog's proximity to larger markets, so the, the greater Bridgeport region's proximity to uh, Boston, New York, um, strong transportation connectivity, uh, and comparably affordable housing, uh, housing as compared to the rest of Fairfield County um, is attracting commuters. And we, and we saw that in the 2020 census, our region has grown by um, about 8,000 or so people uh, from, from 2010 to 2020, uh, based on the, the most recent census data that just came out. Um, Continuing on the socioeconomic side, within the region, there's an obvious dichotomy of residents. Uh, the, the region uh, does not perform as well as other areas of the state. Um, it's due to large concentrations of both affluent and low income households that are geographically separated within the region. Uh, data suggests that opportunities to provide non traditional education opportun opportunities can also uh, provide workforce assets for economic development. Uh, this is things like school to work programs. Uh, the community college, Housatonic, is doing uh, some of this type of work. Uh, and for those of you who have been keeping up on the University of Bridgeport, uh, uh, what's happening with them, uh, Goodwin College, which is uh, currently up in East Hartford, is kind of taking over a number of the programs at UB um, and with, uh, with an eye on creating some of these kind of school to work programs. Uh, one of the things our consultant did mention though is rather than starting these, these types of programs and, and identifying um, people that are interested in these programs when they get to post-secondary uh, education, um, you can really start this as early as middle school. Um, so these types of uh, discussions and, and, and uh, information sessions uh, where you can talk about kind of what, what is out there, what's available for people in the region, um, the earlier you start, the better, and it increases the graduation rates as work as well as employability when, when folks are, are out of uh, high school. The market climate analysis market, uh, Metrocard's market is, is at a pivotal transition point. Um, we're in between from market perspective. It offers strengths and assets, but not necessarily stronger than our regional competitors for certain types of businesses. Obviously, we have uh, you know, our, our local regional competitors in, in New Haven and Stanford um, have a couple have some some different strengths than what we have in this region. I think we want to uh, part of this uh, strategy is to focus on our strengths and try to expand and build upon those. Um, education and healthcare have the strongest fundamentals in Metrocog. Um, obviously, education very. Uh, concentrated in the, in the town of Fairfield with uh, University of Fairfield and Sacred Heart, uh, both which are, are very great schools and are continuing to expand and provide um, a good base of, of uh, students that can, you know, if we can keep them in the region, can, can help kind of drive that um, average age down in the region as well. Uh, growing employment sectors such as education and healthcare are largely, largely dependent on households and demographic shifts, not economic wealth creation. Uh, so that is one of the things that the SEDS looks at is, you know, is, are, are we, do we have employment opportunities that create wealth uh, more so than just uh, have, have households and demographic shifts through them? So these sectors generally do not create fiscal sustainability to maintain and reduce cost burdens for residents. Um, so that kind of the creation of wealth is one that we want to look at more. Um, and that's going to be focused more on kind of the advanced manufacturing and legacy manufacturing, which we'll talk about later. Uh, Metrocog has a stronger employment characteristics in production sectors. Uh, manufacturing is the third highest uh, 
uh, location quotient in the region. Uh, professional and technical service, financial insurance, and corporate headquarters are most prevalent elsewhere in Fairfield County, uh, most notably down in, in, in uh, Stanford. Um, the evolution of manufacturing should be, could be and should be a key concern for the region, but I think there's opportunities there that, that can be helpful. Uh, manufacturers experience an employment decline overall um, and a further decline uh, of if economic trends are, are to hold where they are kind of now and, and continue in a steady state. Uh, available quality of space is not consistent with the current market needs. Um, that's just kind of the kind of space that exists within the region. Acquisition, cost of acquisition and development um, are too high, to, too high to build new in the places that you do have available space. Um, and then you have the obviously the, the discussion that's been happening for a while is automation and um, artificial intelligence and what that does to impact employment levels um, and how it, it concentrates employees in certain in certain locations and certain types of production um, and, and it leaves others out of, of historically places where that would have had uh, significant employment sectors. Uh, the disparity of land values are making production businesses less competitive for land building acquisition. Uh, much of the region's existing production space is functionally obsolete. Um, and a lot of that production space is within the city of Bridgeport. Um, and the, the rehabilitation is financially challenging for a number of reasons, uh, one of which is contamination and historic contamination, um, and just the cost of, of kind of redeveloping in Connecticut and construction costs are, are some of those kind of uh, challenging financial pieces to, to expand and, and create new spaces uh, for this production economy. Uh, quality of life issues in Metrocog involve trade-offs, the transportation infrastructure and skilled labor in the region, which we have a very uh, big piece of uh, infrastructure, as we talked about earlier with the train, although it didn't run today, but uh, between the train and 95, uh, Route 8, 25, we have a, a lot of connections both in and out of the region um, and a very skilled labor market that make the region competitive to attracting businesses and, and supporting businesses in the region. Um, it's comparably affordable to other locations in Fairfield County and, and certainly to New York City, uh, which gives the region a competitive advantage. I think we've seen that, um, certainly the town of Fairfield has seen that um, since uh, the, the onset of COVID and the number of people that have relocated from, from New York to uh, this part of the region. Uh, relatively high cost of doing business in the state, um, as we all know, are, are, are a concern, um, including tax, energy costs, and regulations are disadvantages in the region. Uh, but these are not state, these are not obviously unique to our region. These are statewide issues. Um, and that's something that through this SEDS process um, and through the economic development uh, strategies that both this region have and, and other regions, there are other urban regions in the uh, state of Connecticut, uh, we hope to continue to work with the legislature uh, to try to look for reforms that can benefit the region, the municipalities um, to make business better in Connecticut. Uh, quality of life issues. The housing affordability is a concern for the region. Uh, even with lower nominal, co nominal costs compared to the rest of Fairfield County. Um, both renters and owners, the shares of households that are cost burdened, uh, which is spending, I believe, more than 35% or 40% uh, of your uh, monthly income on house are higher in Metrocog than in the rest of Fairfield County, the state of Connecticut, or the national averages. Um, affordability was particularly a problem in, in Bridgeport with the highest share of cost burdened owners and the largest number of cost burdened renters among, amongst the six municipalities in the region. Uh, the region's reputation for quality of life may not be accurately portrayed. Um, and the, the suggestion from the consultant after the discussions he's had with local stakeholders is the need for an aggressive fact-based marketing campaign to change some of the perceptions of the quality of life um, in and around uh, the region, uh, mainly in the center city. Uh, the regional economic uh, development plan needs to respect uh, differences in each community. Um, so that's one thing we want to make sure that kind of is, is, is at the forefront of this idea is that you know, this strategy is not a one size fits all for all six municipalities in the region. Um, some of the strategies that will be presented now and are, and are part of the implementation matrix will be viable in some places and not in others. And that's okay. Uh, it's, not, it's not meant to be a blanket type of strategy. Um, there are years of muscle memory around internal competitive, competitiveness between municipalities that needs to be overcome. Um, and from a regional perspective, it's better for all towns to ensure the right match between tenants and space and needs. Uh, regardless of which towns receives the tax revenue, although that is something that obviously is a is a driver for municipalities is increasing that grand list to uh, keep taxes as low as possible for residents. Uh, and for certain large initiatives, co-investment between jurisdictions can help promote uh, the region, regardless of physical location or space. Um, and I'm going to turn it over now to Deputy Director uh, for Metrocog, Patrick Carlton, to, to bring you through the last few slides here on the SWOT analysis and the, and the implementation. 
Yes, uh, thanks, Matt. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Mark, for allowing us to present this morning. Um, and thank you, Matt, for, for going through the kind of the, the general findings uh, of the data collection that we ran through with our consultant as part of the sets. Um, next couple of slides, I'm just going to go over um, the SWOT analysis that uh, we conducted with our consultant. Uh, this was done uh, through engagement with various stakeholders throughout the region, local businesses, chambers, uh, economic development professionals, nonprofits, things like that. Um, and a lot of the things that I'm going to touch on here, Matt already spoke to in, in some, of, some of those overarching findings. Um, so I won't, I won't get in too much detail, but I just wanted to go through these with you uh, so you have a, an understanding. And then um, follow, you know, I'll follow that up with uh, uh, the list of uh, uh, implementation actions that were recommended by our consultant that we hope to uh, work on in the coming years. Uh, one thing I think Matt did not mention is the SEDS is uh, for a five-year uh, time frame. So every five years we're required by EDA to update the SEDS so we can be eligible for some of those fe federal funding programs. Um, so with that, I will I will uh, roll into the to the strengths of the SWOT analysis. Um, our proximity to major markets, obviously, you know, the Greater Bridgeport region is located, um, you know, very very close to New York City, the New York uh, metro area. But we're also very relatively close to to Boston as well. Um, and obviously, in in state in Connecticut, uh, we have great locations to Stamford, Hartford, and New Haven, which all have their 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 own little uh, uh, regional markets as well. So definitely our proximity um, is, a, is a strong suit. Um, our transportation network, Matt touched on this a little bit, Interstate 95, Metro North, Route 8. A um, couple other things that we don't necessarily always think about is we do have a regional airport, Sikorsky. It is small. It does need a lot of uh, investment and work, uh, but it is an asset. And the consultants did think that um, it, it could be utilized in the future uh, for economic uh, you know, vitality. Um, and also same, same thing with the port that we have here um, in, in Bridgeport. Um, I'm actually, you know, in our offices now and I could, I could see it out my window. So it's, a, it's definitely a part of that trans transportation network that uh, our region should take advantage of. Uh, skilled regional workforce, uh, we're very highly educated compared to other regions in the state of Connecticut and obviously, uh, you know, nationally. Um, we have a strong production-based economy, uh, history of manufacturing here, um, but you know, it's, that's obviously still ongoing. We have a lot of prevalent manufacturers, including Sikorsky, which is the, the region's largest employer uh, by number of employees. Um, there's a great implementation in infrastructure in place. We have a lot of people doing different things regarding economic development. Uh, we have our local municipal economic development directors and offices. We have workforce development boards, uh, our higher education institutions, our, our community colleges and universities do economic development work on a daily basis. Um, and, we, and we offer a value proposition, um, as Matt touched on early on in the presentation. Um, while it's still, you know, affordability is still an issue here, we are, we are a cheaper alternative than lower Fairfield County and, and Westchester and, and areas uh, in, in, in the immediate New York City metropolitan area. Uh, Matt, can you advance to the next slide, please? Thanks. Um, as for our weaknesses, um, unified vision. Uh, coordination, cooperation, physical inventory, public perception, and lifestyle options. I'll, I'll start uh, with the unified vision. Uh, our region lacks a defined economic development vision and priorities with various market sectors and individual municipalities being self-reliant for promotion, retention, and recruitment. Um, our consultants thought that uh, working together, working collaboratively, collaboratively and coming up with maybe a more regional uh, approach uh, could benefit the region as a whole and also local municipalities. Um, I will skip over coordination co cooperation because I think that ties into that, that unified vision uh, weakness. Um, our physical inventory, a lot of our land is, our, is currently built out um, and our zoning requirements, uh, you know, our local zoning requirements um, don't allow for, you know, redevelopment or development in, in certain areas such as, you know, green space and things like that. Uh, public perception. This is really geared towards, I think, the center city, um, city of Bridgeport, and, and it being the, large, the state's largest city. There has been some 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 challenges uh, um, there, so I think the consultant <laughs> thought that we can do a better job of of maybe uh, turning that around. Uh, and then our lifestyle options: uh, we have a very strong residential market here within the region, um, with with a majority of uh, residents in our region commuting out of the region for employment opportunities. Um, the idea is. We should want to create a live, work, play environment where we can live, work, and have entertain entertainment options all within our region versus having to go out outside of our region for those for some of those elements. 
our opportunities. Um, the city, the consultants thought the city of Bridgeport was the uh, was a, a kind of a defining factor for our economic development strategy. Uh, it is the economic center of the region, um, and as its economic development prospects rise, so will those of surrounding towns. Uh, local talent, um, you know, we have four colleges and universities, Housatonic Community College, University of Bridgeport, Fairfield University, and Sacred Heart. Um, that's a lot of talent that, that, uh, that, we, uh, that we have. So I will, uh, um, I think we, something we should capitalize uh, and try to keep that talent, uh, you know, in our region. Um, entrepreneurial development, catalyst sites, housing type and pricing diversity. Um, I'll just touch on those quickly. Um, same thing with the colleges and universities. We have a lot of young talent that could that want to be entrepreneurs, and we have a lot of you know aging population that could lend their 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 experience in their investment into those into those entrepreneur, entrepreneurial initiatives. Catalyst sites, just to speak to Fairfield quickly, the Fairfield Metro Center is one of those identified sites, along with Steel Point and Bridgeport, the Stratford Army Engine Plant in Stratford, Steve, the former Stevenson property in Monroe. So there's a lot of large. Uh, large scale redevelopment uh, opportunities within our region. It's just how do we plan for those and how do we strategize to, to unlock them and to get the greatest economic uh, potential out of those. Uh, next slide. And our threats, uh, similar to some of the weaknesses, uh, regional ex execution, intra-regional competition, aging workforce, housing affordability, parochialism, and funding structure challenges. I think I've talked, Matt and I have both talked to these uh, you know, throughout this presentation. Um, so I'll, I'll skip over those. You guys have a copy of the presentation, um, so you can kind of go through those as, as, as you see fit. Um, but, you know, we pretty much laid those things out. Um, our consultant has recommended the following target industries for us to focus on, uh, legacy manufacturing, specifically aerospace with Sikorsky, and obviously the large supply chain that exists within our region to Sikorsky. Uh, we also have a strong medical and equipment and supplies manufacturing base. Uh, I think of Cooper Surgical in the town of Trumbull. Immediate product manufacturing is included in that legacy manufacturing. And the other three are consum consumables manufacturing, healthcare, recreation, and leisure. Uh, getting into the implementation framework now, uh, we have six themes of strategies that we would like to focus on as part of this economic development strategy. They are organization and coordination, business retention and expansion, business recruitment and attraction, asset development, workforce development, and outreach community and marketing strategies. Uh, some of the priority actions include uh, a more regional approach uh, to economic development. Uh, not, and this obviously by no means um, we, we want to take away from the local control and economic, economic development. We know it's important, but from a recruiting aspect, um, things like that, marketing, it's better. It may be better to have a more regional approach and, and regional vision. Uh, unified implementation. Um, Matt, I'll ask you to go through these slides rather quickly. I don't want to take up too much time. And I think these are all laid out in the, in the documents that we provided. Um, speaking to business retention, expansion, and recruitment, development of the region's brand that defines how MetroCog envisions its future, prioritizing existing business engagement with municipal economic development groups, such as this economic development commission, uh, developing the necessary marketing collateral to increase awareness and benefits of the region, scale of expectations, and investing for success, being realistic. Um, finally, I think this is the last slide of the implementation framework, um, build specialties, Certain economic development activity, activities do not require different approaches, entities, and staff. Um, there are existing partners that could bring instant capacity and expertise, and there are several silo entities competing for the same dollars of attention. So how can we come? How can we be more collaborative and 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 get the best and kind of the most bang for our buck? Uh, sorry, I, I forgot about this one. Asset development, uh, identify and celebrate priority uh, development and investment sites. That's referring to those catalytic sites that we have throughout the region. And balance, and balance economic development needs with other needs such as housing, green space, open space, parks, recreation, things like that. Uh, as far as the next steps go, uh, Matt referred to this early on. Uh, we did put out a, a, a draft of the SEDS uh, yesterday. Uh, it'll be out for 30 days for the public to review. We plan on, we have a full press release. We plan on hitting that uh, in the newspapers and to all the local municipalities within our region uh, and try to get as much public feedback as it's possible. If you guys have any networks that you'd like to pass these documents along to, please feel free to do so. Uh, we do have a public information meeting scheduled for September 15th. Uh, it'll be at our offices. We'll also have a virtual option as well. Um, our board will ultimately have to approve the SEDS. Uh, we hope that can be done at the September 30th meeting. 
Uh, and then we'll go to state and federal review, uh, the State Department of Economic and Community Development and Office of Policy and Manage Management review this document, as does our funding partner, the Economic Development Administration at the United States Department of Commerce. So with that, uh, I'll open up uh, to any questions for, for Matt or I. Um, and you know, if you have any any other questions or want any more information, we're 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 available and we'll we're happy to to have a follow up or or anything like that. So thank you. Thanks, Pat. Uh, uh, can I may I ask a question? I'm taking minutes, so can I call you back? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, go ahead, John. Gretchen, you're on, you're not on mute. Go ahead, John. Uh, it, it, Kenny. Ken, sorry. I didn't yes, know. No, no worries. So um, you, you, this may have been revealed in previous meetings or, or, or somewhat, but can you give me the backstory on, on, um, on the uh, grouping of Fairfield with Bridgeport and the towns to the north, rather than grouping Fairfield with the towns to the south? Sure. Um, so there was a uh, there was a previous <laughs> comprehensive economic development strategy that was drafted back in uh, 20, 2000, started in 2009 and was finalized in, I believe, 2011. Um, that one was referred to as the One Coast, One Future uh, SEDS. I believe Mark, Mark was around for, for part of that. Um, that included the six municipalities of, of the Metrocog region, as well as um, the eight municipalities that are uh, along lower Fairfield, southern Fairfield County. Um, so it was 14 total municipalities. Uh, the, the problem with that one, and I, I wasn't around it when that was drafted and when that was kind of in, in uh, produced, so I don't know all the history of it, um, but they produced an economic development strategy, um, but then more or less the, 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 there was no implementation on it. It kind of just sat. Um, and one of the things the state of Connecticut has done is uh, they, they, they passed legislation uh, basically requ requiring the economic development districts, the EDDs, um, which are what, this, what the comprehensive economic development strategy covers uh, to be uh, coincidental with the boundaries of the councils of governments, uh, which is what we are. Um, so there's nine council governments in the state. They wanna have no more than nine economic development districts in the state of Connecticut, and they want them to coincide uh, with the council government uh, districts. So that's, that's kind of what happened there. The Western Connecticut Council Governments, which is lower Fairfield County, but goes all the way up to Danbury as well, um, and, and north of Danbury, uh, they have their own economic development strategy. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that's the reason why this one is just for our region. Um, the One Coast, One Future, as I said, was drafted, but kind of never moved forward once it was a document that was- Matt, that Matt's, being, Matt's being polite, uh, because uh, there was an effort to try to consolidate uh, Western Connecticut with uh, Metrocog, or the, the towns as part of the planning region and Western Connecticut uh, didn't wanna do that uh, for whatever reason. So we'll just leave it at that. But uh, essentially the economic development strategy has to uh, basically adhere to the jurisdictional boundaries of the planning district, the, the regional planning district, which is Metrocon. Gotcha, understood. And is, is part of that, is, is this determine how money, federal or state money is distributed to each uh, region. So, so there's no there's no um, formula direct formula funding through these through this mechanism. Uh, what the EDD does, what the EDD designation, which is that economic development district designation from EDA, allows you to do is that when when you have that, you are then um, eligible for EDA uh, grants. Um, so if we think if we think about it right now, and it's very pertinent at the moment, which is why we're trying to move through this process as quickly as we possibly can and get the, the state OKs, get our Metrocog board to approve it and get it to EDA as quickly as possible, is because we need an approved SEDS before we can apply for any of the American Rescue Plan Act money uh, through EDA, um, which has thankfully it's, it's a it's a multi year funding mechanism so we're not going to miss out on money, um, but that it does it does uh, unlock our ability to apply for or work with other entities in the region to apply for economic development administration money uh, funding. So there's no direct formula funding on it, but there is competitive funding available on an annual basis from EDA. Gotcha. So the, the competition for our funding, right? So if we, so if there's a dollar to be distributed through MetroCog, um, I got to believe that uh, Bridgeport would probably want to demand more of that dollar, leaving less to the other constituent towns. Is, would, would that be a, 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 an accurate assessment? 
No, I mean, a lot of the EDA money, especially the, 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 the more annual funding mechanisms that they have beyond what the American Rescue Plan Act has, is providing, which is a significant mm -hmm. investment in EDA uh, on, in a number of categories that historically they don't always have funding for. Um, I, I think those are those can be those can and should be applied across the entire region to every municipality. Um, is there are there potential pieces that make more sense in one municipality than another? Sure, of course. Um, but I don't think that there's there's no reason that uh, town of Fairfield will be limited on the amount of money that they could potentially apply for and bring into the town or bring in or Metro could bring into the region and, and coordinate on behalf of all the towns together. So um, I, I understand your point, but I, I do think, you know, we, we work in the Metro Cog has always worked in a way that, you know, we are providing services to the entire region. Um, we're not here to one municipality more than the other. Um, you know, if, if it makes sense for one program to be located somewhere because that's their, that's the market that they need to be in, you know, we, we will have those discussions, but we are also here to make sure we are supporting every municipality in the region. I got you, got you. So it's it's based on merit, not necessarily you know a proportional allocation of monies based on populations or yep. or was I got no, you. It, would, okay. it would be project, and it's project driven. Too. Yeah, it's, it's fully you. project driven. So that yeah, there's no even if if so say we, you know if we got a a, a grant for five hundred thousand dollars, we wouldn't split that uh, you know per capita across the region. It would be used on whatever the scoping of that project was for the entire region. Understood. Uh, other questions for uh, Matt? Uh, would there be uh, would it be helpful for this uh, commission to provide some formal acknowledgement of uh, this presentation and our review of the the plan as I think part that would be of great. the public process? Okay, that'd be fantastic. If, if yeah, we have yeah, any well, additional comments, I mean, so, yeah, I've already provided some some informal comments on on the, on the earlier draft. So and we've made those any ones. other ones. Okay, and and what one. <clears throat> One thing I will say, Mark, um, we did uh, the, the version that you got, uh, and I think that you distributed to this commission, I think earlier this week, potentially last Friday, um, we did format a version through our professional template. So we do have the, the, the version up on the, our, our website is a much more visually appealing version of the document. It's the same narrative, things like that. Uh, but we did get those changes and we will include your changes. Um, okay. And as long as the commission, any of the commission's uh, changes uh, in that final document that will ultimately be uh, uh, done September 30th after the public review comment period. Okay. And I would say, Mark, you will we will provide you those uh, the, the the links to the the new form fully formatted documents because they are I will say they are much easier to get through um, than the 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 kind of narratives the way they're laid out in the in the version we sent you previously. So we'll provide those to you right after this, Mark. So you can send it out to this to this group. Okay. Thank uh, you. Question comment. Um, I noticed there's a high emphasis on um, manufacturing in, a, in the presentation. And I'm just curious w why that is, considering that manufacturing had its day here quite a long time ago, and that day seems to have passed on. And also the trend with all the universities around um, tend to be away from manufacturing type education and, and job growth, where it's more in the area of technology and uh, healthcare would be one of those areas which fits. But nonetheless, um, I'm just curious if, if let's say Fairfield came up with a program that didn't fit the profile of what is being recommended and was outside that, let's say, just for sake, for the sake of argument, setting up a technology center um, akin to something that's going on in Silicon Valley, would that automatically be eliminated because it doesn't fit the profile of what's been laid out here? No, so the, 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 the implementation uh, strategies are are proposed and they're not they're not set in stone by any means as Pat said this is a document that is living it will be updated every five years um, so you know we are not completely you know we're, these aren't the, the the six target areas that we're looking for that are never going to change um, you know with that being said um, you know I, I do think to a certain to a certain extent the, the advanced manufacturing that's happening now as compared to manufacturing that was creating you know Ren Remington Arms and Bridgeport and the Army Engine Plant, it's a different type of manufacturing, um, and it is kind of technology-based. Um, there is a significant amount of IT that goes into the advanced manufacturing now and, and IT experience that's necessary uh, to, to do a lot of this advanced manufacturing, a lot of the CNC stuff, the programming that goes into it. Um, so I would, I, would, I would push back just a little bit, and I do understand what you're saying, but the, the manufacturing that we're kind of discussing, and we're also part of 
Uh, Metrocog is, is part of a regional sector partnership for kind of all of Fairfield counties focused specifically on advanced manufacturing. Um, and I would say, and it was something that kind of was a surprise to me, um, between basically between Greenwich and more or less Oxford, as we kind of go along the coast and up the Route 8 corridor, um, there's about 385 individual manufacturing businesses in this in our in our little portion of Connecticut, um, and they 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 run the gamut from you know very small one or two person uh, manufacturers. Uh, there's a, a company in Wilton, ASML, that has 450 uh, people working in Wilton on a, on a daily basis doing advanced manufacturing. Um, and it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's fittings, it's, so, it's machining, but it's also uh, medical uh, imaging, um, as Pat said, Cooper Surgical in, in, um, in Trumbull, uh, Ashcroft uh, in, in, um, in Stratford, Africa. as well as you know, your, your consumables, your big OT, which is a huge manufacturing um, uh, footprint in, in the town of Fairfield. Um, so while, while I do understand your point, um, and, and certainly know that if, you know, if, if we came up with an idea that we could create a technology hub, uh, in the in the region, and we thought we could get funding for it and, and have the, the backing for it. We it would not be uh, unavailable to us to pursue that by any means. Okay, great. Uh, you mentioned uh, the regional airport. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, is there any understanding uh, that? My understanding is that that the city is actually trying to get the state to take. It. Is there is that kind of incorporated in a little bit of what you're uh, the report is going to, to have or what recommendations. So we don't, we didn't get into the ownership aspect of it. Obviously it's a, it's a little bit of a, a, a funky ownership uh, piece anyways, cause it's owned by the city of Bridgeport, but it's squarely in the middle of Stratford. Um, right, so there's, right. there's that piece of it too. Um, I, I can't speak directly to the discussions that have been happening between the city of Bridgeport and the, the new Connecticut uh, aviation administration. Um, in terms of taking it over, but I do know those discussions have been ongoing. Um, there's there's a number of, of pieces that have kind of been limiting what the potential uses for um, for the airport are. Um, one of which is the uh, the existing uh, the uh, the smokestack for the the old coal fired power plant. Um, if you ever look at that smokestack, it's actually directly in line with one of the runways, uh, which negates, based, based on FAA rules, negates the abilities for that runway to be used um, in most in most uh, cases because it's within the whatever the threshold buffer distance is of the of the runway. Um, so when and if hopefully that comes down, that changes some of the dynamics of the airport generally. Um, and there are some significant upgrades that have been made to the airport uh, to to comply with FAA standards. Um, and there's also a need for more money. There's some some bonded money that the state is hopefully getting, uh, hopefully providing uh, to the airport to do some resurfacing of the runways uh, to allow for larger uh, larger uh, planes to land. Um, but I, I, we don't specifically get into the ownership piece. I will uh, I will defer to the city and the state on on that. Um, but I do think that whatever happens as this moves forward, um, we we see Metrogog. Uh, I think the city, the the, the and this valleys in the region see that airport as a significant potential asset that hasn't been fully utilized. And I think if we can make the right investments in it, uh, could be a very uh, powerful economic driver for this region. I, my understanding is that if, in having the state take it over, it would gate the municipality against municipality. The state would override a lot of, uh, of, of what's been holding up for the port from uh, the, the, the Stratford location. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, the one thing I will say, they, the, the airport has been um, going through a, a long-term planning process for an airport master plan uh, for Sikorsky. It started about a year and a half ago. I think it got held up a bit, obviously, as everything else did with COVID. Um, but I, to that point, though, I will say that having been, having been part of those meetings, um, the town of Stratford is fully engaged in that process. Um, and I think they also understand the potential economic benefit of a, of a, of a more functional airport, potentially one that provides passenger service in and out of the region. Um, so I do think that there are some benefits to, to bring the state in if that were what were to end up. Um, but again, I, I don't, I don't have any more knowledge probably than you do, uh, Kevin, on, on how close those talks or how close those discussions have gotten to an actual kind of handover. Um, so I, I, unfortunately, I, I can't provide any greater detail on that, but it's something that we're certainly keeping an eye on. I think we'll be um, continue to try to be part of those discussions and, and um, planning for the airport as we move forward here. 
Excellent. So uh, one other item uh, now pertaining to, say, Park's counterpart in Bridgeport, I think that's Tom Gill. Yep. Uh, had, had, obviously, you've had, you had discussion with him. Uh, obviously, uh, this is leaning towards a, a, uh, a uh, unification of sorts uh, of effort. Uh, uh, center. Uh, what commentary has on this report that will potentially change this report? So we have not received any direct feedback yet on the drafts uh, from the city of Bridgeport at this point. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't anticipate significant revisions or, or, or comments from the city that would change. We did, you know, in the drafting of this, we sat down and met with them a number of times. Um, so they're aware of kind of the, 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 the basic elements that were can, are contained uh, within the, within the report or within the, uh, the planning document. Um, and I, you know, to Pat, one thing that Pat mentioned earlier is, you know, I, the, the potential kind of regional collaboration on economic development is in no way meant to negate or diminish the, the work of individual municipal economic development commissions, economic development and community development departments within the municipalities, um, where, you know, one of our, th our thought really is to try to utilize our existing structures that, it, that we have here and leverage them a little bit better, maybe even just creating more coordination between everyone. Um, so it's not really, it's, I, I want to, and I want to make that clear is that we're not trying to say we should come in here and have one economic development part, department for the entire region. That's, that's not what's in this report. Um, we would never, we would never uh, make that recommendation um, because there is a lot of great work and, and value that's done at the local level. Uh, we just think that we can hopefully provide um, a regional collaborative effort um, in specific areas to try to promote the region. Um, be it maybe a regional marketing strategy that doesn't um, that includes more than one municipality or a regional kind of um, job fair that we can we can help uh, coordinate alongside all six R municipalities. Um, so those types of things are really what we're trying to hopefully move this through. Um, but it, it is in no way meant to try to take any um, authority or or di directive uh, authority away from municipalities. No, I understand. Let's. You know. I, 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 I realize that you're, you're looking for the symbiotic uh, portions of it. Trying to, yes. <laughs> yes. Good. Uh, anyone else have any questions? Uh, just one last thing. In terms of the federal funding, are we, what dollar amounts are potentially out there? Is it uh, it, it, it honestly, it, it fluctuates year to year right now with the, the rescue plan act money, there's a significant amount of money that was in the ARPA plan for specifically for EDA for, uh, they have a number of programs. There's a build back better program. Uh, there's a job training and entrepreneurial program. Um, and those have, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in them right now across the country. Um, they're all competitive. Um, but there is there, there's portions of it basically uh, that each each EDA region, which we're part of region one, uh, which uh, is basically from Philadelphia all the way up through uh, the northeast. Um, you know, they they have kind of in the background of EDA, from what I've heard, kind of separated some of these monies out by region. Um, but, you know, there's 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 millions of dollars potentially available, um, but it depends on what you're putting out there as a project or a program, uh, what partners you have. Um, if you have any other capital you're bringing to the project. Um, but I will say one of the ongoing EDA funding mechanisms is a public works infrastructure program. Um, I know we've, we've, I've talked with Mark and, and Bill Hurley and of Fairfield before on you know, something like the, uh, the uh, East Main or Eastern sewer, uh, sewer main expansion project. You know, something like that, that you can tie back specifically to economic development because you can't add additional um, buildings and, 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 and people and inhabitants to an area unless you expand your, your infrastructure. Those types of projects have an annual funding allocation from EDA, although that money uh, prior to ARPA had kind of been declining on a year over year basis. Um, so it, I, I can't put a dollar amount on it, Justin. I, I, I'm sorry, uh, but it, it, there is funny funding available. And I do think that, you know, because of and due to the COVID pandemic, um, there's been a significant increase in DC in the understanding of the need for better economic development, planning, programming, and resiliency. And so I, my hope is that beyond just the um, uh, Rescue Plan Act funding, uh, that there will be an understanding that continual money for economic development through the EDA is a necessary um, piece of the pie to make sure that our 
state, our region, and, and really the entire country is 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 moving forward in a in a prosperous economic development uh, uh, strategy perspective. Those funds would probably uh, be more uh, attractive if uh, if multiple towns or at least several towns were, were connected to a project. Would that be true? Yes, that's something that we actually met with. We met with the EDA um, a couple weeks ago, the EDA project officer out of the Philadelphia office. And that's one of the things that is part of, um, especially the, the Rescue Plan Money Act, or the Rescue Plan Act money, sorry. Um, one of the things that's part of their uh, criteria for, um, you know, evaluating, pro, uh, evaluating uh, potential proposals is, or do you have multiple municipalities within your economic development district that are collaborating on this? So yes, Kevin, to your point, if we can if we can look to uh, you know try to fund things that have a multi multi municipality, intra municipality um, kind of flavor to them, where we're bringing together stakeholders and 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 economic development directors and other folks, private nonprofits from multiple communities in a in an entrepreneurial development program, that certainly is is a benefit and a and and would look. Uh, be looked more favorably upon by EDA. So like a Rooster River Ash Creek flood mitigation project would actually hit the mark pretty nicely. Yes, that, def that definitely could. Um, and I, you know, and, and for, that's, that's one of those that gets kind of, uh, it skirts along the, the, probably the toes, the line of economic development and resiliency and, and uh, hazard mitigation. Um, but I do, to your point, there's a significant uh, economic development base in those flood, flood prone areas. Um, so you can make the argument that, you know, it's as much economic development resiliency as it is, as it is environmental resiliency. So, um, you know, those types of projects, yeah, that type of kind of uh, cross community programmatic uh, proposals, those things, those are always more highly uh, favorable from a, a, from a federal perspective. And it took the words right out of my mouth. There we go. Timing is, Timing is everything, I would, I would say, on that too, right? I mean, money's there until it's Until it's not. So it's not. Yeah. But to that point, which is why we're trying to move through this public uh, comment period right now in 30 days, get the MetroCog board approval at the end of September. Uh, we've already talked with our state, our state uh, partners to make sure that they will start reviewing the draft now um, so they can turn around their approvals pretty quickly on their end. Uh, and, we've, and we've worked with our product officer, EDA, to ensure that she also um, is going to look at our draft immediately and get that approved as quickly as possible. So um, once once we kind of finish the draft, which was really finished yesterday afternoon, um, we're now going to start turning our a lot of our attention over to uh, the available the available funding programs through that ARPA money um, that EDA has available and start doing outreach to um, yourself, Mark, Mark, his counterparts in the region um, to really start coming up with viable. Uh, programmatic proposals that we can uh, get ready to submit as soon as our approval is ready to go. We uh, got for, some. for these. I know you do. <laughs> that's that's great, uh, Matt. Uh, that's wonderful, Patrick. Uh, any any other questions for these gentlemen? Okay. All right. Well, I just want to say you. thank you, Kevin uh, and Mark, and the commission for having us. We really appreciate you all taking the time to um, to hear our presentation and, and ask some really thoughtful, meaningful questions. So thank you very much. Thank you, Matt, Patrick. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I know we're running uh, over time here and we've lost a few commission members, but picked up our commission emeritus, uh, Mr. Penzer. Uh, oh, I saw that. So, it, um, but I did uh, want to, uh, if there was anything else, on, I don't really have anything that's te te technically that urgent. Uh, okay. You know, what a difference a month has made in terms of where we are in the COVID uh, plan and, and guidance. Uh, so uh, as you probably know, the first select woman work with her counterparts in Easton and Trumbull and uh, I'm sorry, Easton and Westport um, to uh, to enact uh, a local uh, mass mass requirement indoors. Um, you know, so that that went into effect, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, but um, um, and we have one new application. So uh, for the COVID uh, small business grants, uh, that's complete. I, I mentioned to Don Peterson before that uh, we'll be bringing that to the committee uh, shortly as soon as we can get a, a meeting together. So we have about uh, a little over $21,000 left to commit uh, out of the original allocation. And then, um, you know, we're starting to see a few inquiries uh, from, from some small businesses that hadn't yet applied. Uh, I'm not, uh, but you know, it's not not nearly the pace that was uh, earlier uh, this year 
were last uh, in terms of the level of inquiries or, or application processes. So uh, we'll just keep that in mind. Good. Do we, uh, you don't have anything pertinent to, to, to talk about right now, Mark? Maybe we should ask Beverly if, uh, if she's still well, with us. She had to drop and, and I, wanted oh. to, I wanted to defer to her, but I know she had another meeting to come to. But, uh, oh. but I, will, I will follow up with you with regard to our presentation today to see whether or not it would be appropriate for us to weigh in a little bit more um, you know, for, uh, a, as a group uh, with regard to this uh, plan. I'm, I'm not sure it's absolutely necessary, but it, it couldn't hurt. Uh, if, if we uh, want to provide some acknowledgement and add a taste and that uh, this is moving in the right direction, that we appreciate the work that's been done by Metrocog on, on this uh, regional plan. I, I uh, in, in all truth, I haven't had the opportunity to read through yes. the whole thing. <laughs> I realize that you, you're probably in the, you're probably speaking for the majority of other commission members, but I will, I will also make sure that I get a copy of the presentation or a link to that out to the commission, and then we can have a further conversation uh, later this month. So, okay, very good. Uh, any uh, any other uh, commentary from any of the remaining individuals that are in this meeting? I, I have to apologize. I had to drop for for uh, the the latter part of of the presentation. I guess you know one of the questions I have, and apologies again if I missed and it was brought up. Um, I thought that the, that they addressed you know a lot of the the, the interesting issues, relevant issues. Um, and and what they that what they put together made sense for you know some notes that I took about you know Bridgeport and reputation I think that's evolving and then manufacturing like all of the data that they have makes sense but I guess the question is and and, and if they did address it let me know um, how do they plan to recruit companies to come to Connecticut for new manufacturing in this region. You know, we have a tax issue, you know, you're seeing growth in, in, the, in the lower tax states, like obviously Florida and Texas and, and, and Tennessee. Um, when we think, I think about, you know, chip manufacturing, which is going to be, you know, a, a big proposal in the United States through the Biden administration and the infrastructure bill and how those may affect us. But from, from the governor's platform or from from our sort of local area if if we were to bring in sort of higher skilled labor type of jobs is there a plan to recruit some outside companies to 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 you know come to this area and, and build businesses the, sh the short answer is they didn't address it specifically and it's not addressed specifically in the plan the plan just recognizes that there's need for us to work regionally and with the state to do business recruitment and not so much uh, parochially as each individual municipality, which is not uh, not very efficient and not very effective, I might add. So um, I think it will have to be done in concert with the state. That'll have to be something that's, uh, but um, I also want to recognize Justin's point too. I mean, there, there is legacy manufacturing here and it's surprising the, the strength of it, uh, but uh, there are some underlying uh, cost competitiveness issues that make it difficult to relocate new manufacturing to the area, uh, perhaps here. at a higher level. But, you know, <laughs> the underlying cost of land, for example, in Fairfield uh, doesn't support manufacturing uses. It, it just it just doesn't pencil out in any in any stretch. And there's nothing that we can really do to change that dynamic. But, um, you know, we do start with there is. Uh, some strong manufacturing legacy businesses here that we want to retain. Uh, they're already here. They already own their, their land. Uh, if we can work collaboratively, we can retain them. The expansion piece is, is might be a, a, a bit of a, a stretch for us, though. Except, on the, you know, the higher end, I think Justin was pointing out, as you probably did, John, you know, the higher end where it's more very uh, intellectual, you know, intellectually property based type thing, you know, where it's creative. I, I just feel like, you know, those higher skilled jobs, you know, to if, if, if even if, if outside of Fairfield, if, you know, Bridgeport was a place to recruit that, that overflow into Fairfield mm -hmm. really supports everybody, right? And, yep. and so it, it, it creates, you know, better jobs for, for working class people. And then, you know, other towns that, that provide the service part of that industry um, would, would be able to support that. And, and so, again, I, I mean, I thought the data points were great and it addressed a lot. It just 
they didn't really talk about, okay, yeah. how are we going to execute? It basically right? says, hey, we need a business attraction strategy and we need right. to work creatively. Yeah. Uh, right. Are we going to do that? So. Right. So, so you could take that whole report and file it, but you, but you have to execute it. Right. Well, that's that's just it. We don't have a history of working regionally, uh, collaboratively across uh, geographic, you know, boundaries, town lines, and and that's really you have to you have to create that framework so that yeah. we begin to to function that way. I mean, the thought process is what ben what may not directly benefit the town of Fairfield may have overflow. So if we give something up in the near term and help another area within the region, it ultimately down the road helps us, right? Yeah. And and then we can sort of plan it out. I just, I would have liked to see like, you know, the blueprint for how are we going to move forward with with the data and what are we going to do with it? And, you know, again, it's great. But set up set up another, another organization to, to do this. To do that. <laughs> well, you read the implementation the, strategy, that's what it says. Basically. You know, the economic development person for the state really should should be working on that oh, I mean, yeah I, I, I mean i i saw i saw it First actively <laughs> pre-covid pre i mean the, the the economic development person uh secretary that runs uh for the state of, of florida and you know i'm not going to get into the politics of of what they're doing i mean i have my own views but but you know before covid ron DeSantis and the secretary were coming up here yeah. um looking for businesses to to recruit to go down there and you know obviously it's it's been positive economically there's some you know shortfalls and challenges that that they've they've seen but you know you look at at, at some of these other states that we're they're seeing tremendous growth in either you know financial services industry or even manufacturing uh, i just i just feel like you know we're in a great place because you know we have that tie in to, to boston around 128 where there is manufacturing if if you know i, I just throw this example if if there was an area in bridgeport we could build a you know a chip plant right which is again a big push of moving that business back into the us um it would benefit everybody i mean we've lost GE, we've had some makeup because of, you know, people moving out of, of, you know, the closer metropolitan New York area out here. But as far as taking it to the next step of, of, you know, creating real jobs for, for, for the poor and the, and, and, and those in, in, in more, you know, poverty areas that would ultimately not only benefit them, but overflow to us. I, I would just, I'd love to, to see a plan from, from the state of, you know, how do we get from point A to point B other than here's the data. Totally agree. Yeah. And, you know, if Bridgeport opened up the casino, it would solve a lot of problems. That's another hour long conversation. That's right. right. <laughs> Gentlemen, <laughs> if there was an answer and it was simple, it would have already been done. That's true. That's true. Very good. Very good. I, I think we're going to, if, uh, unless uh, there's an objection, I think we're going to, we're going to end our, our meeting today and, and I, I appreciate everyone's taking the time. Peter, it's uh, great seeing you again, uh, as, uh, as always. Uh, and again, thank you each for your time. Uh, Mark, we'll, we'll look for the email and we'll respond from there. Great. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, right. Thank you. Good to see you. Right. We're adjourned at right. 936 then.